This video is on setup and commissioning of the AR4 robot. I have my robot assembled and it is uh, currently at the vertical rest position. Everything's powered on and plugged in. Uh, if we look at the chapter seven startup procedure in the manual, um, you can see there's uh, some uh, illustrations here. Um, so I've got all of my motor cables plugged from the enclosure from the corresponding numbers here on the enclosure to the base of the robot. And then I have three Ethernet cables that are also plugged in from the uh, enclosure to the base of the robot on these uh, corresponding ports right here. The uh, first thing we'll want to do is install the Arduino software. So um, I'm here on the Arduino software page, uh, uh, navigated to the uh, download section. Uh, current version as of the time of, of this video is uh, 1.8.19. So um, we will, uh, if you ever have any issues uh, on future versions, just remember you can come back here and, uh, and go back to a previous version uh, and see if that uh, solves any problems. But we will download that right here. Okay, so that is finished downloading. And so it's here on my desktop. So I'm going to install that. Okay, so the Arduino software is uh, now installed. So um, the next thing we want to do is to install the uh, TNC uh, Arduino loader. The TNC 4.1 board is um, an Arduino compatible board, but it still requires a loader called the TNC Duino. So uh, currently uh, we're using version 1.56. So I'll come here to the pjrc.com TNC, uh, TNC Duino downloads page, and we will download that right here. The TNC Duino software is finished downloading, so now we will install that. So we'll click next, next. Okay, so now that's done. So next we'll go to the uh, Anon Robotics website and uh, we'll go to the uh, Downloads and Manuals uh, tab. And um, there's a few things that we'll need on here. Um, there's the uh, control software. You can either download the uh, source files or you can download the exe files. Most people just download the exe file. If you wanna play with the source code, um, you're free to do so just uh, you'll need python version 3.73 installed and you'll need the pi serial module the inputs module uh, the numpy module and the ttk themes module installed and i have uh, i have a separate video um, on uh, some of the python stuff there that might be helpful um, so you can download right here download the uh, control exe file and then for loading the software onto the tnc 4.1 board we have the sketch right here um, to load the sketch onto the uh, board and we've also got the, uh, the sketch for the Arduino uh, Nano which the Arduino uh, board is just a, a uh, board for handling I.O. Um, the reason that I have the uh, an auxiliary board in there for handling I.O. is that it's a 5 volt board and the TNC is at 3.3 volts and a lot of the relay boards and uh, servos and things that people would want to use for grippers are or five volts so that's why there's uh you'll see in the manual i've added a an arduino nano in the uh, architecture um, that you can use for uh for that sort of thing um, the manuals right here as well as the uh 2d prints and then all of the uh the print files but for right now i'm going to concentrate on the uh tc 4.1 sketch so i have that um, downloaded to my desktop so that's right here. So I'm going to open this up. So the first thing that I want to do is go to tools and I'm going to go to board and 
Go to TNC Duino and make sure that the TNC 4.1 board is selected. And then I'm going to go to port and I am going to select the port that my TNC is on, which in my case, it's on uh, COM port 13. Um, and once I have that set, I can just hit upload and it will compile the sketch. You'll see right here, it says compiling. And uh, once it compiles, it should automatically open the TNC Duino software and it will upload the program to the board. Now the TNC Duino software says press button on TNC to um, enter programming mode. I've never had to touch any of that. I just did it just like you saw there. And so it says here that we're uh, done uploading and the uh, TNC Duino loader should also um, install the TNC, uh, I believe it installs the TNC um, encoder libraries uh, that are needed as well. So I don't think you need to uh, go into the tools and, and manually load the, uh, the uh, TNC encoder libraries. Okay, so now after that's done, I have uh, opened up the AR4 software. You can see here when it first opens up, it says unable to establish communication with the TNC uh, 4.1 controller. Uh, it's to be expected. We haven't set the COM port yet. So I'm going to come in here to config settings and I'm going to set my COM port to 13, which is what we saw that it was set to in the Arduino IDE software. And I will hit uh, set COM and it will say system ready. Um, you can come in here to the log and you will see uh, communication started with TNC 4.1 controller. So now we are connected uh, to the robot. And if we go back to the uh, startup procedure in the manual, uh, from this point, I've got um, you know some instructions here in the manual to walk you through all of this. Uh, so there's a little bit more uh, detail here in the manual, but in a nutshell, um, once we're connected to the robot, you know, the first thing, um, you know, I would recommend is, um, you know, check that the encoders are working and check that the limit switches are working. And, uh, we want to check that, um, the robot's jogging in all the correct directions. You can see that, uh, if I click on a direction, you can see the robot is, uh, jogging as expected. And I just want to make sure that when I'm jogging the robot, um, that I follow this um, image in the startup section to make sure that positive and negative that each joint is um, jogging in the correct uh, direction. Um, sometimes if you have one of your uh, driver motor power wires backwards, you can uh, you can have motors jog in the wrong direction. And if you have uh, joint four or six, for example, going in opposite directions or one of them in the wrong direction, it'll it can, uh, it can goof you up. To test the encoders, I have a built-in program called Test Encoders. This is, can just be used as a troubleshooting tool, just if you're having any issues or you want to make sure that they're working properly. I'll type in Test Encoders Load Program. So um, the first thing I want to do here before starting the program is I'm going to shut off power to my controller. This will um, de-energize all of the drivers. So now um, I can manually move uh, the joints by hand. I do want to make sure that my robot is in a vertical position so that it can't collapse or anything like that um, when I shut off power. But once I've shut off power, I can hit play. And you can see up here I've got values shown for each encoder. These are just arbitrary uh, numbers. I just started at 1,000. It doesn't the number doesn't mean anything, but it's just meant to give you a indication for each joint uh, that the encoder is responding properly. So if I'm, for example, was to uh, manually manipulate joint one, you can see the uh, value climbs in the positive direction. And if I manually manipulate it the other way, you can see it goes in the negative direction. So this is just meant to be a troubleshooting tool for each joint. Just be careful um, to not um, force anything um, and just move each joint slightly um, just to make sure that it's uh, you know reacting and each uh, encoder is working as you would uh, expect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power back on to my enclosure.
and then um, the next thing we want to check is all of our limit switches um, we don't want to run an auto calibration procedure until we verified that all the switches are working um, we want to make sure that um, the way the switches are wired is that um, they should be returning a ground signal to the teensy pin for each individual switch um, when the switch is not made and then when the switch is made it should be returning um, a positive 3.3 volts to the teensy pin so if you're you know troubleshooting each um, limit switch with a multimeter you would want to make sure when the switch is not made that that uh, corresponding pin in the uh, wiring diagram that goes to you know whichever pin it is on the uh, teensy board that it is ground that it is uh, reading ground when it is not made and reading 3.3 volts when it is made um, to test each one an easy way to to do a test I have a built-in program called uh, test limit switches So I'll uh, load that program, and then when I hit play on that, we have um, some values up here. So when I reach over and toggle the limit switch, you should see this go from a, a 0 to a 1. It's right there. Every time I press it, you can see it uh, changes to a 1. And if we did uh, joint 2, you can see joint 2 coming on and off there. So again, this is just another troubleshooting tool to help you make sure that all of your um, limit switches are working. Once you've verified all of them are working, you can come here to the uh, config setting tab and hit auto calibrate and run through the auto calibration procedure. Um, just be careful if you have an end of arm tool, if you've got a gripper that is, uh, you know, lo longer than um, it can hit joint four. And so for that reason, I also have um, buttons to uh, individually calibrate joints, or you can deselect a certain joint if you only wanted, um, you know, if you didn't want to, for example, if you didn't want joint four to, uh, to rotate and you just wanted to auto calibrate all the rest of the joints, you can select which ones you want. Um, so that concludes the uh, startup and commissioning of the robot. Uh, please reach out to me and email me if you have any questions. All right, thanks.